Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So this is my first ever GoPro, the GoPro Hero 9 Black. And I'm going to go over the best new features, the pros and the cons, and why I have finally bought one. So if you're like me and you've never owned a GoPro before, this might be of interest to you. So it was released just a couple of weeks ago and it's available in two versions. You've got the camera on its own or you can purchase it as part of a bundle. Now both of these options come with a 32GB SD card and a hard case as well to store it in. So I actually opted for the bundle as it meant it came with a few extra accessories including a hand grip, a floating clip and a spare battery. I'd read that these eat through batteries quite quickly so I thought it was best to go for at least one extra one. Price wise it can be a little bit confusing if you buy direct from GoPro. You can buy it with and without the yearly GoPro subscription but it actually works out cheaper overall if you buy it with it. I'll cover what's included in the subscription later. So it's either £430 or $450 for the camera with no subscription compared to £330 or $350 which includes a year subscription. Then the bundle is about another £50 or $50 more. And what's great about the GoPro 9 is they've done away with the plastic packaging as well and they've replaced it with cardboard. And the hard case itself, well that acts as the packaging and it actually looks pretty nice as well. The front facing camera is probably one of the biggest new features this year and it's something that the previous versions haven't had. Now this is one of the main reasons that I actually held off buying in the past and it nearly led me to buying the DJI Action Cam instead. This little screen allows you to see what the camera sees while you're looking at the lens from the front. Now this is obviously perfect for vlogging or talking to the camera, not something that I do that often, but it also means that I can now set the camera up without needing to view the rear screen. So for me for example this would be perfect for doing in-car driving shots where I can attach it to the roof in my car, I can look back over my shoulder and I can see exactly what the lens sees as opposed to trying to get into the back of the car and then looking at the rear screen instead. If you've made it this far in and you're enjoying the video or it's helped you out at all please drop a like as it really does help me out. When it comes to using the camera it's pretty straightforward, there's a power button on the side which you press and hold to turn it on or off and then you can tap it to cycle through the different modes including photo, video and time lapse. Then on the top there's the record button, again one quick tap and it's either recording or taking photos depending on the mode that you're in. One thing I did notice though that is pretty cool is if the GoPro is switched off completely and then I press the record button it actually wakes it up out of standby and it starts recording immediately and as soon as you press the record button again to stop it then puts it straight back to sleep so there's no need to power it on, wait, then press record if you don't want to miss anything. On the bottom of the camera there are two prongs or folding fingers as GoPro call it which are designed for mounting it onto your accessories that you might have. Now I'll be using this to attach it to the suction mount in my car mainly for inside shots but I'm also if I'm feeling brave enough I can stick it on the outside of my car but you can also use it for say the hand grip if you're using one or even the clip that allows you to clip it onto almost any surface or objects that you can think of. So here's a few examples where I've used it around the house. Now these cameras are designed for extreme sports which means not only are they waterproof up to 10 meters they are also very very tough. Now that means that dropping it shouldn't really cause you any issues but saying that if you did drop it the first thing that you're probably going to break or scratch is going to be the lens. Fortunately they have brought back the removable lens again which they did take away in the Hero 8 whereas now you can just pull and twist the lens to swap it out. So the whole purpose for getting a GoPro is to record footage and the Hero 9 does not disappoint but I'll put the resolutions on screen now so plenty of choice here. My personal choice is 4K at 30. And when it comes to recording there are several lens modes available. You've got super view at 16mm, wide at 16-34mm, linear at 19-39mm and narrow at 27mm. Now they are all different fields of view so swapping between the two different lenses you just tap the icon on the screen and slide the bar up or down. Now one of the reasons I actually wanted to go for the GoPro was to replace me using my iPhone when I shoot on ultra wide. Here you can see as I change between the different lens options, so that's going between super view, wide, linear and narrow, you can see the different view of each shot. Now bearing in mind, although I have colour graded these clips slightly, I've made no edits at all to the field of view or distortion. So what do you think so far? So the GoPro 9 is packing a new 23.6 megapixel sensor, which is incredible for a camera of this size. It will take JPEG photos at 20 megapixels using various options including Superphoto, Standard and HDR. It also has RAW photo capability as well which means that you can edit your photos even further without losing any data as you would with a JPEG. And the photo quality is really good too, I was genuinely surprised at how good it looked. 
Now you can also do screen grabs as well. So when you're in video mode, say shooting in 5K or 4K, the quality of the footage is so good that you can just take a screenshot from that footage without worrying about taking photographs independently. The Hero 9 comes with Hypersmooth 3.0 and this is essentially a digital stabilizer to make the footage taken as smooth as possible. And it does an incredible job too. I mean, it's almost as good as an actual gimbal. So if you've seen my DJI Osmo video, where I compare the DJI gimbal to an iPhone 11 internal stabilization, you'll see how the iPhone did, which was okay. Well, this is kind of the same idea. GoPro's Hypersmooth 3.0 will take the footage and automatically add the stabilization. And to be honest, it does a far better job than what the iPhone does. Personally, I'm not going to be use it for extreme sports. However, it will make the footage that I take that little bit smoother and that little bit easier to watch. On the rear, there's the 2.7 inch touchscreen display. And the picture quality for this screen is adequate for seeing what you're shooting, but it does not do the footage justice. I will add that the screen itself is really laggy. It's slow and sometimes just impossible to use. So on several occasions, I was actually trying to press the options, including swapping the different lens views. And no matter how many times I tried, it just was not responding. Now I went online and had a read and I could see that other people have an exactly the same issue. So it doesn't warrant a return, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Maybe it's something that it will update in a software update, or maybe it's just the screen itself and we'll just have to live with it. One awesome feature of the GoPro is the ability to control it via the GoPro app on your phone. Now this allows you to view a live feed of the camera, press record, stop, and even view previously recorded footage back on your phone. For me, this is extremely useful for putting the camera in places such as on top of the car, and I can check what the camera can see via the app instead of looking on the screen. But what's even better than this is the ability to change the resolution, the lens, and every other setting you can think of. And as I mentioned earlier, because the touch screen of the camera is so fiddly and laggy, the app actually might be the easiest way to do it. Another awesome feature of the Hero 9 is the ability to use voice commands. And let's face it, most of us are using voice commands on our phones and around the house anyway. So for example, if you had it set up on a tripod or you had it on your helmet and you either couldn't press the button because you couldn't reach it or you didn't want to use the app on your phone, well, you can now just say start recording or stop recording. And the same applies for taking photos and using the time lapse. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the GoPro was cheaper if you signed up for the subscription model. Well, what you get for around £50 or $50 a year is unlimited cloud storage for all of your GoPro footage, total camera replacement if you break it twice a year, and up to 50% off GoPro accessories off their own website, which actually isn't a bad deal. So just remember to cancel the subscription or put a reminder in your calendar, otherwise you'll be charged again in 12 months. The battery life on this is okay, so the new and improved batteries are rated at 30% more battery life when compared to the previous version, but this is obviously dependent on what settings that you're using. Now I was recording and messing around for hours and I only used 40% of the battery. Now two hours of battery is definitely achievable on this, so using it for half a day won't be a problem, but again having a spare battery if you go for the bundle is definitely the best idea. One thing to note if you're coming from the older GoPros is the Hero 9 is a lot larger and it's larger in almost every way. It's bulkier, it's heavier. For me, it's not really a problem because I've obviously got nothing to compare it to. And the fact that I've been using my iPhone 11 Pro Max to record most of my videos, this thing feels tiny in comparison. So for the last two years of wanting a GoPro, the Hero 9 finally ticked every box for me. It's got the front facing screen, which is one of the reasons I nearly bought the DJI Action Cam this year. It's got an awesome app, it's got voice control, a removable lens, and up to 5K footage. This really is their best one yet, and I'm pleased that I held out for this one, as I don't change my gear that often. I've put a link in the description if you want to check out the GoPro on their website, and as always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or you want to see more, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.